Hey up. Um, it's been ages since I've done a video. And that has something to do with the fact that it's gone dark and horrible outside. And uh, even the delightful experience of talking to seven people across the whole of the internet um, becomes a bit of a chore when you're feeling grumpy about the blackness. But also because Doctor Who's on such a good run of form at the moment. It honestly feels sometimes when you're talking about uh, everything being brilliant, it becomes a bit repetitive. So we've finished all of Frontier in Space. And all of Frontier in Space is utterly brilliant and continues season 10's claim to be in the best season of Doctor Who so far. Um, I am flabbergasted with how much I'm enjoying Pertwee at the moment. He is absolutely brilliant, really finding a story and uh, a take on the character that suits him and his Doctor. Joe is so good in this story that she has completely won me over in a typical Joe way, just without even realising it, you're thinking you're the best thing since sliced bread and the way that she uh, dominates the master towards the end of the story. Uh, and it's just sublime and funny and good. And they're such a good team. It's taken a long time for me to recognise that, but they are a good team. And and I've said it before, I think Poe's Doctor works best off Earth, and I think Joe works best off Earth as well. Um, and I just, I just think those two are sublime. The shock reveal of the Master is just brilliant. Um, and Delgado is not certainly not going through the motions, um, but it is a joy to have this paradoxically comfortable sand in the Vaseline. You know what the Master does. He's just a proper git. Obviously, it's tragically sad that this is the last we see of Delgado, uh, particularly when his ending is, is fairly undermined by the fact that he gets upstaged by the Daleks and then has some poor editing, but that's by the by. Talking of poor editing, um, for a six-part story to feel so rammed, so much so that the last episode feels chopped together just to fit everything in is a testament to how well written this story is. It is so well put together. We go from uh, location to location, meet lots of different characters. All the characters feel fleshed out. It's amazing. Uh, and on top of that, we have a whole new race of aliens who, if flabbergasted, we've never come back. The draconians are sublime. Uh, and the brief look we get at their hierarchy and the stuff we learn about them, you know, even if it is borrowed heavily from Japanese culture or whatever, uh, is great. Um, the setup on Earth is brilliant. I love the fact that we have a female president and it's just the thing that is, and there is a bit of tension caused by that, but it's not a big, it's not the main thing. Um, uh, the model work in this is. You know, it's not to today's standards, but it does the job and it's so, so fine. It's nice to see the Ogrons back um, and I kind of feel as if there's a little culture there that we just touch upon, that weird blobby thing at the end, love it. And then, of course, we get the Daleks and it does feel like a big, big deal. And quite honestly, I could watch a story like this every day. The way that it just belts along, the way that it's so assured of itself, the way that it, the way it's just a fine, fine Doctor Who story. Now, uh, I think my son's waking up and I have to go. Um, I'm absolutely loving Doctor Who at the moment. In these dark, dark nights, it's one of these shining lights where you can just tune in and enjoy yourself. And it's just brilliant. Long way, Pertwee Rain. <laughs> I'd be saying that. Bye-bye.